All right. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining the Mesh IQ session. We are going to talk about number one observability platform for the integration mesh. And um, hopefully you find this session valuable. And we have uh, a lot of information in the session. I'm happy to take questions after the session. And also we have a raffle as well, where you can win a PS5. So first things first, we are the observability platform built for integration mesh. And now, clearly, you have a question which says, uh, what is MESH? So MESH stands for messaging, event processing, streaming. And these technologies can be deployed across hybrid cloud. So messaging, event processing, streaming deployed across hybrid cloud is how we define integration MESH. And you may be familiar with some of these technologies. And if not, we will cover them on the next slide. Now, these, some of these are self-explanatory, but quickly, uh, messaging is one of the oldest form of data transfer besides file-based transfers. Um, IBM launched MQ in the 90s, and other vendors like Microsoft, Oracle, et cetera, they use some sort of uh, MQ, and there are open source solutions, and um, ActiveMQ is uh, very popular along with RabbitMQ, and these are the two open source solutions which are the leaders in these, this category. And then came event processing. Event processing is an advanced version over simple messaging. And typically, there's a broker. And events are published and subscribed. And they, they are routed through the broker. And uh, the, the pattern is known as PubSub. And even the cloud vendors today, they have their own vendors. Google has PubSub, Google Cloud PubSub, and Amazon has SQS, Azure has Azure ESP. Then comes streaming, which is the ability to handle large amounts of streaming data, like capturing click-throughs on a website or showing feed or uh, customer notifications on a portal. A good example is that as you are attending the session today, you can post your questions and everybody sees your questions. That is a good example of streaming. Now, Kafka is the leader in this category. And uh, Kafka came out of LinkedIn and now is the number one standard for streaming uh, data across applications. So there's an open source option for um, Kafka, Apache Kafka, and there's a paid version from vendors like Confluent. And other notable options are Pulsar, Apache Flink, Hazelcast, and you know, obviously streaming is moving towards stream processing very quickly. So we support Apache Kafka Confluent today, and there are, there are a few other technologies which we will support down the road. So mostly everything on this slide is supported as of today. And a few things are going to get supported in the next uh, a few quarters. And then all of this could be deployed in the hybrid mode, either on-prem, cloud, or multi-cloud. Right? So we support all these installations. And now the next question, obviously, is what do you guys do? Right. So um, we have a complete observability and a management platform for all your middleware applications. So whether you're using you know, MQ or ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ or streaming like Apache Kafka Confluent or um, typical web methods, et cetera, we support all of them. Now, in addition to our platform, you can consume our platform using our API. Since we are in the API world conference here, we are going to talk about our API first, but we are going to show you a preview of everything that we do, right? So API gives the um, an interface for all middleware technologies that we define within the mesh, right? So single API, whether you're using MQ, whether you're using TIPCO, web methods, or Kafka, one API will serve all of that. And this API can be used as an automation tool in your CI CD pipeline. So when you are deploying your application, you need to deploy your middleware along with those applications. And as you deploy that middleware, let's say your application uses two or three types of middlewares, and you need to write custom code to, to de deploy all these middleware technologies together. Using one API simplifies the whole thing for you, right? So simple integrations via REST API into other products as, such as Grafana and Prometheus is possible as well. And you essentially manage your whole middleware sprawl using our API, using role-based access controls and object-level security features. So 
very powerful API. Our customers love this API because they can use one API for different middleware technologies. And as the middleware technologies go up or down in versions, the API is backwards compatible, forwards compatible. And also when you decide to change the middleware, we can help there as well because you write against the API and not against the target middleware, right? So that was at a high level. Now the next question is, what kind of problems do we solve? So I highlighted a few problems, but then now let's take a look at the problems we solve based on your function. The first is developers. Developers build the app, they need to manage and deploy configurations across the CI CD tool chain, essentially doing DevOps. And in the DevOps, they need to deploy middleware artifacts. And then comes app owners, they own the app, they want to make sure that the app is functional and the app is delivering value to the end user, which could be internal or external. The need for a single pane of glass for visibility into potential problems because they want their app to be up all the time and the users be happy with the performance, et cetera. And then we have shared services team who manage integration infrastructure for multiple IT teams and need it to be up 24 7, 365. And then we have support teams who are responsible for handling the upset users when the app is either not working or suffering from performance issues, right? They need a quick resolution to find the issue and get to the resolution. So the next, we have a small picture which depicts how a typical IT looks like. So you have legacy apps and these legacy apps could be mainframe or typical Java, uh, J2E uh, enterprise apps. And some of these apps may be connected by MQ and some of them may be connected by TIPCO or web methods or some other um, event broker. Now, the other teams within the IT have been adopting SaaS apps, and they are also using Kafka to connect these apps. And then another app may use Solus for EDA, event-driven architecture within that infrastructure. And then throw in some Kafka, some you know, RabbitMQ, some ActiveMQ, uh, GMS along with that. And this is what you know, has been the uh, IT infrastructure for middleware and then enter the cloud hyperscalers and cloud hyperscalers deliver Amazon SQS, Kinesis, bunch of different technologies from AWS and then Google PubSub and Azure ESB. So every hyperscaler will have uh, one of their PubSub technologies for messaging, right? So you, if you use one cloud provider, you may be using one of these. If you have multiple cloud providers, you could be using many of these. And there is also a chance that you want to interop these technologies together. So at a high level, your messaging infrastructure could be very complex because you have some older infrastructure, some newer infrastructure, streaming and cloud, et cetera, which is complementing your IBM MQ and the other legacy technologies, right? So integration mesh essentially connects your legacy and modern applications together. And now enter Mesh IQ. We help you manage configurations for all your messaging middleware, manage the messages themselves. What do we mean by manage messages? A developer needs to copy paste messages, needs visibility into the broker. Um, you can view, copy, edit, paste, do all sorts of things. And you can search across the different mesh silos, right? So you need visibility into Solus, you need visibility into ActiveMQ, and you need to be able to search across these technologies and we can enable you to track and trace across these technologies. You can detect anomalies, troubleshoot faster, which means you can find issues across this complex middleware infrastructure and troubleshoot faster. And you can track your flow and messages as they flow through. And if you detect a bottleneck, you can set up thresholds and get alerts and you can do analytics on how your messaging infrastructure looks like on a typical day. And then you can go from there. Right? You can see what is wrong today. Uh, this broker is running slow. Maybe I need to increase the memory. So we help you in proactive troubleshooting so that disasters and meltdowns don't happen. The next question is, well, this platform sounds like IT. What is the business value? Right. So there is value on both the sides. Um, IT has to live with the legacy messaging infrastructure, but they also need to support the new Kafka streaming, Google Cloud, PubSub, Azure ESB, et cetera, right? Some of it on-prem, some, some of it is in the cloud, and you have to monitor all of that. 
So we enable you uh, to do all of that. And before we go to the business side, I would like to give you a quick example. And the example is that, you know, take a, any bank today. Uh, any bank has a mobile app built on modern technology, most of it using, you know, say, Angular along with Apache Kafka or Confluent Kafka. And when they pull information on a customer account, they may be hitting a legacy technology like mainframe in the back, which has the ledger for the account, right? So in this case, the information is going from Kafka, maybe even Solus, Tipco, web methods in the middle, and then ultimately hitting MQ, right? So you need to be able to see that your middleware is functioning to its um, top performance all the way end to end. Now, business, exactly wants that. They want to be able to launch newer apps, newer capability, an app that adds new feature every week. The reality is that <clears throat> most of the time, it means that the new features in the new app will be using a mix of older and newer technologies. So we enable business to deliver functionality faster because your newer middleware can seamlessly work with your older middleware. And because we monitor the performance of both, we help you with deployments of both older and the uh, newer middleware. And we also help you track things across. So you're not working in the Kafka silo. And you know when the performance is degrading, you're struggling to find out whether this is an MQ problem or a Kafka problem. So mesh components at a high level, they power legacy and modern apps and they deliver mission critical business outcomes and they are incredibly important to both IT and business. So this, this is a sort of an eye chart, but it kind of articulates what we do. So four core functions, we have governance for configuration and message management, secure self-service for DevOps. One developer could have access to uh, deploy MQ in development. Another de developer could have access to deploy Kafka and the third developer could have access to deploy both Kafka, MQ, and Solus, right? So you can set very clear role-based privileges using our governance module. And then comes intelligence, which is all about monitoring and alerting. You can gain intelligence into how your infrastructure is operating uh, today, and you can fix uh, thresholds, you can do proactive alerting. Proactive alerting is very important in the sense that you don't want to be alerted once something has gone down which is the problem with typical monitoring observability platforms. We actually are one of the few platforms who enable proactive alerting so that things, uh, bottlenecks don't become meltdowns. Third is the action around triggers. Uh, triggers can be um, automated based on the uh, events that are flowing through, or you can pipe in the, uh, the data into a third party AI ops tool, and then you can trigger actions from there. And then essentially you invoke intelligent actions um, determined by machine learning, and those uh, AI ML could be powered in by a different AI ops platform. And then we have introspection, which is the performance analytics powered by historical data, right? So you, you, have, uh, you process 1 billion events per day, and suddenly you're seeing 2 billion events maybe the ERP triggered duplicate transactions with the intros advanced introspection capabilities, you can find all that out. And then we have tracking and tracing of application message flows end to end. You can see, hey, this uh, this application is sending events from Kafka to Tipco to Solus to um, MQ, and you want to trace and track it end to end. And with our platform, you can do that pretty seamlessly. So um, in um, a few other things, um, just to highlight, what we enable you to do is cross-platform configurations, uh, speeding up your DevOps, because now you can simply add middleware to your DevOps instead of coding it. So your DevOps tool chain becomes more robust. You can do selective rollbacks. Um, you can say, hey, this middleware configuration is not working well. Let me just roll this one back from this developer. And then every other thing is not rolled back, right? So selective rollbacks are very important when the deployments go wrong. And then you can also do predict predictions using AI ML. We do include some AI ML capabilities. And if you need more, you can pipe in the data into another um, AI ops provider and then use them. And then finally, we allow you to act, not just observe. This is an observability platform meant for acting. And we have customers who have not gone down. They haven't had a production outage in the last 15 years or so. So very powerful technology, which allows you to fix things in time before they become meltdowns. 
Now, another question we typically get is, hey, we have we have not used Mesh IQ, but we have been maintaining over a dozen platforms. Why do we adopt Mesh IQ? Now, can you live without Mesh IQ? The answer is absolutely yes. And the reality is, if you have six, eight, 10, 12 middleware technologies, you will have multiple monitoring tools. It will become expensive, complicated. You will never get end-to-end -end visibility and things will be very hard, very difficult to troubleshoot and fix. Second thing is cross-platform governance. Each middleware technology has different role-based model. So diverse roles and users, uh, they need to be set up across different. So one developer could be set up differently in MQ, in Kafka, in TIPCO. And you can simplify that but just by just using our platform, right? Uh, you will when you run into deployment issues, it will be very hard to track and roll back. You have to roll back a configuration in Kafka, one configuration in Tipco, and one con configuration in Solus or MQ. And then with us, it's just simple selective rollback. You can you can see um, this developer made this change in MQ, this in Kafka, this in Tipco, and you can roll back all of that with simple one click. And then you have uh, DevOps tool chains. You don't need to write extensive code for enabling CI CD for different middleware technologies. And you, you don't need to work with diverse APIs provided by different tools. We make the interop very simple and we make the maintenance and upgrades very easy. And finally, we make it possible to act in time without Mesh IQ. The troubleshooting becomes slower. You will be missing out on your SLA. So if you have a SaaS platform today, which uses two or three middleware technologies, and you have SLAs with your customers, and you're not able to meet them because your deployments are not stable, you can actually fix that. You can improve the middleware part using our technology. And then you can um, you can you know uh, save on the penalties or the usage credits that you are um, sending to your customers, right? So improve the user satisfaction as well. All right, a few examples. And these examples are very detailed. So I will just touch upon the high level so that you understand how our platforms, uh, platform is used. The first example is from one of the largest banks in US. They had five middleware platforms deployed across 5,000 plus servers. So they were able to gain visibility across Kafka, MQ, IIB, WAS, and TIPCO using our platform. And as a result, they saved more than $20 million versus using the previous solutions. Another big bank, they have 60 million plus daily transactions. They monitor all of them, and they monitor 200,000 plus queues, 30,000 plus channels, and they saved around $3 million annually by by moving on to our platform and sunsetting the previous solutions that they used. Another retailer in North America, they had a lot of customer satisfaction issues because orders were slow. They were getting duplicate orders, missed orders, et cetera. And they had a 70% reduction in support tickets. And they solved 90% of the problems within tier one support because we fixed their middleware. As a result, their orders had uh, far less problems. A telco provider, um, they gained 30% reduction in service issues and provisioning. And as a result, they had um, the MTTR went down 45%. Another bank in England, they had 60% uh, reduction in lost transactions and latent transactions, and also 90% reduction in reporting penalties because they had to report a lot of these transactions to the government body, which they were not able to do and they were paying penalties. Now being able to track all the transactions in real time and generate reports in real time, they gained significant advantages uh, as a result. All right, so this is just a little bit more into the retail organization's order fulfillment issue. They were actually getting their reputation damaged. Uh, the customer satisfaction was very low and they had all types of problems in order fulfillment. They had lost orders and uh, high churn and the event monitoring solution was overwhelmed and they had a huge backlog of tickets at service desk. And all the problems were getting escalated from tier one to tier two to tier three support, costing them a lot of money. So we replaced their in-house eyes on screen event monitoring solution 
we gained situational awareness and automated detection of anomalies, which reduced their order failures and improved customer experience, satisfaction, retention, et cetera. And then they, in, they were able to increase the bottom line revenue and reduce their support cost. And the best thing is the whole solution was deployed and started providing value in less than two months. All right, so a little bit about our company now. We have talked about our customers, our solution, what do we do, what problems do we solve for what kind of you know, IT um, personas. So uh, a little bit about ourselves. We, are, we have 100 plus customers, and most of these customers are found in DevOps, engineering, IT, and shared services, and sometimes also in application support within a typical company. We are in six plus continents. Um, mainly in North America and Europe, but we do have customers in South America, Africa, Australia, and Asia as well. Uh, six industries, banking and finance is a big one for us, followed closely by retail, transportation, and then insurance and manufacturing and public sector. 100 plus employees, mainly out of Plainview, New York, and uh, remote employees since COVID. And we have teams in Europe um, and uh, mainly Lithuania and also in India. Uh, our customers love us. They trust us with, uh, uh, with with their production systems, and we have won many awards. Some of them are highlighted on this slide, and some of them are highlighted on our website. Now, we are integration experts, right? Our leadership team has a combined over 100 years of integration and observability experience. So we are all about integration, observability, and management, and how you can gain higher value from your investments in the integration middleware technologies, right? So we have a strong leadership team from diverse industries. And the, you know, just to recap the benefits of mesh observability, if you want to consolidate your observability tool, if you feel that you are managing your middleware platforms in silos, and you want to detect bottlenecks across mesh vendors, uh, prevent outages and unlock real value from the middleware. And you want to stop the blame game where the Kafka team says, hey, Kafka is up. I think it's a TIPCO problem. The TIPCO team says, hey, TIPCO is fine. It's a you know, MQ problem. We troubleshoot. We help you manage those things end to end. And we are number one in the breadth of coverage across different middleware technologies. So you can bring in, you can throw a new middleware platform for us at us and we will start supporting it if we don't support it already. We, we pride ourselves in our breadth of coverage, which allows us to give, uh, deliver a huge uh, benefit, which is cross-platform visibility. It enables our customers to scale with the integration mesh and a lot of SaaS vendors and other uh, IT um, leaders, they find that we we improve their MTBF and MTTR scores. We have some examples that I showed on the customer slide. We have more examples. So if you are struggling with management, middleware management, you have too many tools, the cost is skyrocketing, and you struggle with troubleshooting, we can help you fix all of those things and lower your TCO uh, if you give us a call. Right. You can engage with us right now during this session. And if you want to stay engaged with MeshIQ, you can visit our website, uh, meshiq.com. And we also uh, do monthly tech talks, meshiq.com slash events, where you can sign up for our tech talks. And you can also um, view some of our previously recorded tech talks. They are available on our uh, YouTube channel. And then if you just simply want a demo, let's say you're adopting a new middleware, you are using TIPCO web methods or something today, and then you want to see, hey, how can I manage this along with our, let's say, Azure ESB or some other uh, cloud-based messaging, and you want to see how on-prem uh, events are flowing into cloud and how the cloud events are going back into on-prem. So all these uh, demo scenarios are, you know, you can just, Drop us an email, and we are happy to do a demo for you. And that's it from my side. Opening for any questions now.